This right here is China's Z-10, the People's Liberation Army's signature attack helicopter, also known as Fierce Thunderbolt. Some experts claim it's the Chinese Apache. Meanwhile, the PLA themselves even claim it's better than their Western counterparts. It does bear a striking resemblance to the American Apache helicopter, but are they close siblings or distant kissing cousins? China claims this is their first domestically produced attack helicopter, but we'll see that's not exactly true. Does the Z-10 really have the latest S-tier improvements in weaponry and avionics? I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Hit the like and subscribe button and let's find out. So before this beast, China mainly just had civilian scout helicopters. They first started trying to acquire a proper attack helicopter in the mid-1980s in order to counter large armor formations. This capability is uniquely important to China specifically because much of their western territory is mountainous and extremely difficult for tanks to traverse. I want to impress upon you just how important this helicopter program was to the Chinese government. They were investing over $500 million USD in the early 1990s, which is over a billion bucks today. It was one of the most secret and important projects within China's ninth five-year plan. But first, if you're anything like me, the TV series Band of Brothers stands out as one of the greatest war dramas ever created. For my younger friends out there who might have missed its release back in 2001, I highly recommend checking it out. And now, the dream team producers behind Band of Brothers in the Pacific, that's Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, they have a brand new World War II series following the brave airmen of the 100th Bomb Group, dubbed Masters of the Air. Just like Band of Brothers, Masters of the Air is based on actual events and real airmen, and uncovers the human stories of unity, camaraderie, and bravery that were unique to these World War II warriors. Through epic cinematography and unbelievable visual effects, the audience gets an up-close and personal view of the intensity and chaos of war at 35,000 feet, pushing aircraft technology and crews of men to their absolute limit over enemy territory against incredible odds, the stories of Masters of the Air are sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. Masters of the Air premieres on Apple TV Plus Friday, January 26th, so be sure to check it out. The project was originally given to China's Harbin Aircraft Manufacturing Corporation of China's Aviation Industry Corporation as the primary manufacturers working alongside the military's 602 Research Institute. But there were a few major obstacles in their way. For one, Russia had no interest in the 1980s in publicly selling China any of their Mi-24 helicopters. Okay, China thought, let's turn to the United States instead. But this was squashed after the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests and massacre that led to a U.S. arms embargo against China. In 1990, the U.S. Congress prohibited the export of defense articles to the People's Republic of China, also known as the Tiananmen Sanctions. There was even a specific ban on, you guessed it, helicopter technology. China thought to themselves yet again, okay, that's another dead end, now what? Throughout the 1990s, they were able to secure lots of international assistance from other countries though. Their rotor system, for example, was developed with help from Eurocopter France in 1997. And the helicopter's initial stability issues were addressed by the South African company Denel. Then, the British-Italian company Augusta Westland aided China with the transmission technology for their helicopters in 1999. That sounds like a dang parade of nations at an arms Olympics inauguration. Heck, with that many countries chipping in, the prototype should be wrapped in a United Nations flag. Many years later, it was revealed by Guy Norris of Aviation Week that in 1995, China had secretly asked the Russian rotocraft manufacturing company Kamov to design the Z-10 aircraft. Tom Foolery with it began almost immediately though, because publicly the 602 Research Institute was assigned as the chief designer. They did this to give off the impression of this attack helicopter being a domestically produced weapon system. Why would you potentially lie about it being made within your own country? There are a few potential reasons that we'll touch on. One of them is to skirt around international arms embargoes against you. Another is because you want it to be a point of national pride of what you and your nation is able to accomplish on their own. But one of the most difficult humps to overcome in helicopter development is the engine. Here's how China got over that hurdle. Take a look at the Pratt & Whitney PT-6C 67C turboshaft engine. 
Pratt & Whitney Canada is a Canadian subsidiary of United Technology Corporations, which is a U.S. defense contractor based in Connecticut. They illegally sold this advanced engine control software to China. When this was revealed, it was one of the biggest scandals in recent armament history. The story of how that happened was worthy of a soap opera telenovela montage. Welcome back to Frontline Whispers. To get around the arms embargoes against them, China's defense firms said they coincidentally just so happened to be developing a civilian helicopter program. What are the odds? This allowed China to start buying helicopter engines from PWC. Then, China started developing the Z-10 military helicopter at the same exact time. What a dang coincidence! Those two can't possibly be related, right? PWC argued that they didn't need new permissions to send engine tech because they were identical to the ones they were already supplying. But the company sent six versions of this military software without license. Such scandal. Sending them first from the United States to Canada and then to China. According to court documents, PwC knew all along about China's actual true military intentions behind the initial helicopter program. Shock. But they wanted an open, lucrative civilian helicopter market in China and were willing to look the other way. This is based on communications uncovered that showed the PwC marketing people had internally expressed skepticism about the sudden appearance of China's civilian helicopter program. Gasp. How could they? In 2012, they were caught red-handed. They pled guilty and settled on paying more than $75 million to the U.S. Justice and State Departments. This ends this episode of Frontline Whispers. So the Z-10 started working with two Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6C 67C turboshaft engines mounted at the rear of the cockpit. Each engine develops a maximum continuous power of 1,142 kilowatts. These engines are equipped with a FADAC system, which stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. Basically a fully digital control system with no manual overrides or manual controls. Because those engines are strong, independent engines that don't need no pilot to tell them what to do. The version of the engines likely gave the Z-10 a max range of around 1,200 kilometers. All this allowed China to build a full-scale test platform by the end of 2001. Less than two years later, in April 2003, the Z-10 had its maiden flight, and the first operational ones were delivered to the PLA in 2009. The helicopter's chief designer, Wu Xingming, called it one of the world's top three gunships, and he foresaw the future export of this helicopter to other foreign countries. Exporting your weapon systems to other countries isn't just about making a quick buck off selling your weapon systems. There's also a major diplomatic issue because it means you'll be able to work closely with that country for years to come to support those weapon systems. You might even have a good reason now to have your soldiers on the ground in that country. So after China yoinked much of their helicopter technology, if we ask the PLA and take their word for it, they claimed in 2021 in China's central television that their Z-10 was superior to Western counterpart helicopters, stating, quote, thanks to its good aerodynamic design, domestically made engines, excellent handling and maneuverability, the Z-10 is easier to control, has a longer range, and a better multitasking capability than its foreign counterparts, like the Eurocopter Tiger. But China had a major problem. Because after that whole incident with Pratt & Whitney, they could no longer obtain the PWC engines. So they started using their own version, the WZ-9 turboshaft engines. These were developed with Ukrainian and Russian assistance. According to an article from AviationWeek.com, in 1994, a secret contract was signed with the Kamov Design Bureau of Russia in order to design the helicopter airframe. Each engine has a power of about 1,000 kilowatts, and although it's not as powerful as the first engine, it did allow for lower operational costs and freedom from all those pesky international political issues. Because of the lower power though, the variant of the Z-10A has a reduced weight that includes a redesigned nose, twin 90 degree upward engine exhaust ports, and smaller weapons payload. They had to cut the advanced sensor suite too and choose a more moderate suite, not perfect, but good enough for their purposes. By 2016, the PLA announced that they had equipped all of their ground force aviation units with the Z-10. Chinese culture is known for their emphasis on symbolism, and their attack helicopter is no different. 
because their 2016 delivery marked the 30th anniversary of the establishment of the PLA's aviation force. But how would the Z-10 fit into China's organization? The PLAA reorganized its operational scheme to better integrate aviation brigades. What this translates to and really means is that they mirrored how the US Army includes a combat aviation brigade in each of its divisions. There are 15 PLAA aviation brigades, and that works out to about 13 group armies plus the Tibet and Xinjiang military districts. They have four transport battalions, two attack battalions, and one reconnaissance squadron, a headquarters element, and a maintenance and support battalion for each. According to expert Dennis Blasco, each Chinese brigade may have around 80 of these helicopters, but they may not all be at full strength. The US combat aviation brigades have about 110 choppers each, and there are about 1,200 Apaches in service around the world. There is a much, much higher ratio of helicopters to soldiers in the United States military as of today. Some reports, though, state that China has a total of only 150 Z-10 helicopters in service, but in its 2023 military balance, the International Institute for Strategic Studies calculated that the number is closer to about 208 units. There's no official report on how they're distributed, but that's not going to stop us from trying to figure out where they're stationed. The Z-10s are currently being used in 20 Chinese military bases, by 15 brigades in total. We did some real Sherlock Holmes homework to figure this out. Okay, from these 20 bases in China, 11 have Z-10s, 9 have Z-10A variation, and while the northern and eastern theaters in China only have the Z-10A, the Western theaters mainly use the Z-10A for Aviation Academy Brigades. The Eastern and Southern theater commands are passing on the Z-10s and bulking up on the lighter weight Z-19s. So for now, the Z-10s might be more of a potential headache to India than they are to Taiwan. So would these Z-10s be useful on China's new aircraft carrier or landing ships? This is one place where China might be choosing a different approach than the United States military, or it might tell us more about the capabilities of this aircraft. The US military, for example, doesn't widely operate Apaches on their aircraft carriers or landing ships, partly because the seawater is very corrosive to the sensitive machinery of these rotary aircraft, and it would cost a lot to modify them for naval use. Instead, the United States, they use the AH-1Z Viper, and so these heavier attack helicopters are typically used over land operations. That's not to say that the Apache can't be used or couldn't be used, but it's not standard operating procedure to see them on landing naval ships or aircraft carriers in the US military. In 2014, the PLA released photos of their relatively new Z-10 conducting deck trials on their Type 072 class landing ships. This would allow Chinese forces to use their landing ships as a kind of lily pad to launch attack aircraft against Taiwan, potentially. It's interesting to note that the Type 072 ship does have a landing helicopter pad, but they don't have any helicopter hangar or the necessary logistical support facilities, which means this might have just been an experimental proof of concept to see if it could be used on the larger Chinese Type 071 amphibious transport ship. The US Army has trained alongside the Navy to fly Apaches off landing ships, but it's not standard operating procedure. It'll be interesting to see if China chooses to integrate the Z-10 closely with the Navy. So if we look closer at China's attack helicopter doctrine, they claim that they ran some war games and determined that the attack helicopter should be commanded by the Army instead of the Air Force. What a coincidence. Again, that's similar to how the US military had already been running their attack helicopters and had seen major success with that doctrine in the Gulf War. So China created what's called the People's Liberation Army Ground Force Air Force. It's a tongue twister, but that's how imperfect translations go. China also ran some research and tactical experiments, and what do you know, they decided to ditch the tow anti-tank missile for something similar to what the US Apache uses, the Hellfire missile. But what are the actual flight characteristics of the Z-10? What does that tell us about the aircraft? The Z-10 has a conventional attack helicopter layout with a length of about 14 meters and a height of 3.8 meters and a rotor diameter of 12 to 13 meters. It has a maximum takeoff weight of between five to eight tons and it features a nail down fuselage with a sloped side tapered to the rear for a reduced radar cross-section. It has a four-bladed tail rotor with two pairs of blades made with eight layers 
of glass reinforced plastic and composite material that allows it to sustain direct bullet hits potentially. And they're located at an unequal distance to reduce noise, similar to the Apache. The five bladed main rotor is mounted in the midsection of fuselage and the propeller rotates in a clockwise direction. The Z10 has steeped tandem cockpits that accommodate a gunner and pilot. This modern glass cockpit is protected by composite armor and a bullet resistant glass canopy that can withstand 7.62mm rounds. The cockpit fits multifunctional displays because pilots love to multitask and it has fly-by wire control systems. It has a blue sky navigation pod and also uses GPS slash GLONASS systems while waiting for upgrades to China's homemade Badao navigation system if they ever get it fully operational. These helicopters want to go places, but we're just not quite sure where yet. The electronic countermeasures of the Z10 include a BMKG-300G self-protection jamming pod and a laser warning receiver and an infrared jammer and chaff flare decoy launching systems. It's the first Chinese electronic warfare system that integrates all these warning toys in one system. It's called the YH-96 system. This is named after the YH radar and it claims to have a high interception rate of hostile signals. It claims to be able to analyze threats and automatically launch decoys and jamming signals. They claim that it has an IFF system working despite heavy enemy jamming. The Z10 modular design also allows for constant adaptation by replacing jamming and decoy launching systems with the latest technology to match the helmet mounted sight with night vision goggles. And if you want, you could fit a forward looking infrared and low light screen. Thanks to the standard database architecture, the Z10 claims to be able to integrate both Soviet and Western system standards. The Z10 doesn't like to discriminate. It's an equal opportunity launcher. Chinese state media has claimed that the Z10 can destroy six enemy tanks in a single sortie and that they can wipe out three tank companies with four Z10s and the Z10 has many different custom loadouts that make it a versatile war machine. However, this is assuming that their systems actually function as they are intended, and that they're able to develop tactics and doctrine for them. I don't want to put a lot of emphasis on soldiers, individual troops needing combat experience, but I do believe institutional knowledge is important, and that that's something that Chinese forces lack right now when it comes to helicopters. The Fierce Thunderbolt has a 23mm nose cannon with a camera synced to the gunner's helmet, allowing the gunner to swerve and aim just by looking at targets. Its basic weaponry also consists of chin-mounted turret, and it's the first internal gun in a Chinese helicopter. Its two stub wings are really important to take note of. They have two hard points each to hold external weapons that can be 57mm to 90mm rocket pods, although the largest rockets tested were 130mm. For ground attack missions, the Z-10 can also carry multi-barrel unguided rocket pods. Which rockets, you might ask? Probably the Chinese Sky Arrow 90. There are other configurations you could run with, like four of the PL-5 air-to-air missiles, as well as eight TY-90s, which is the missile specifically designed for aerial combat missions. Or you could just go with 16 TY-90s, which can be mounted to any of the four pylons, both inner and outer. The Z-10 can carry 16 missiles in total, making it basically a missile delivery service. They also have laser-guided weapons with the HG-10 missile, that has lock after launch and salvo firing capabilities. But there are some potential downsides for the Z-10 that make it lacking compared to other attack helicopters. For example, the Type 23 L cannon mounted on the turret has a weaker rate of fire and weaker penetration than its peers, like the Apache's 30 millimeter chain gun. And the Z-10 only has four wing mounts compared to the six on the American AH-64D or the Russian Ka-52 Alligator. Other choppers also have 12 or 16 ATGMs and are faster too. And the Z-10 still has some issues with the fragility of the fuselage and stability. Don't get me wrong, I'm not arguing that the Z-10 is a total piece of junk. It likely isn't because it has too many borrowed elements from field proven aircraft from other parts of the world. It weighs about the same as the AH-64 Apache, but it carries just half the armament, which puts it at a similar level to the smaller AH-1 Cobra, which could explain why we saw it being used in that naval capacity. The Z-10 reaches a maximum speed of 186 miles per hour at 3,281 feet, has a max ceiling altitude of six kilometers high. 
Its mobility is said to be decent, but sometimes unstable, so it isn't perfect for rapid aerobatic or violent maneuvers, and it has a hard time dodging incoming fire. As a showcase of the improvements made to the Z-10ME in July 2022, the Chinese military took 10 of these aircraft to join the border patrols in the Karakaram Mountains on their far western border. They operated at an altitude of 5,200 meters high. The patrol and the live fire exercise appeared to disprove many naysayers and skeptics who believed that these were just complete lemons. And it's also said that the Z-10 might have been fitted with the WZ-16, a new, more powerful engine. The WZ-9C engine has a max power of 1,200 kilowatts, which allows this newly upgraded Z-10 to have composite armor with a protection capability that, despite being light, surpasses titanium alloy. According to open source information, it has new infrared suppression systems too. The Chinese military is now working on a new WZ-10 engine that would allow for even more weight and, of course, heavier gear. And finally, 10 years after its official debut, the Z-10 was exported. The Shangxi Aircraft Industries Corporation that now manufactures the Z-10 had tried to seal a deal with Pakistan in 2015, but it might have fallen through due to problems with the engine. However, Pakistan reassessed the decision to procure the upgraded Z-10 model which was to be delivered in the beginning of 2023. So however many improvements they've made to the original Z-10, the Chinese helicopter is more similar to the American Cobra and not the Apache. Far from being the cream of the crop when talking about attack helicopters, the Z-10 shows that the Chinese are potentially more than two decades behind US military hardware. Stay tuned, Spare Parts Army. Thank you for watching. If you have a second, if you found this report interesting in some way, please hit the like and subscribe button and check out one of our new videos here. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy, signing off.